Pennsylvania's COVID-19 restrictions were ruled unconstitutional by a federal judge yesterday. Here to talk more about it is KUSI contributor and legal analyst Dan Eaton. Dan, good morning to you. Good morning, Lauren. So let's talk about this because the judge basically said that the governor's restrictions uh, in Pennsylvania were in violation of the First and Fourteenth Amendments. Can you explain his ruling? Sure. Uh, what the uh, court uh, said uh, was that the uh, restrictions that the governor imposed uh, with respect to uh, congregating uh, were unconstitutional because they violated the First Amendment right to interest rate travel. That is the, the that's the uh, lockdown order that he imposed that essentially prohibited Pennsylvanians from going out of their uh, house. And they said, no, that that really went too far. That was a violation of the First Amendment. And then with respect to the uh, to the uh, lockdown order, uh, the uh, the shutdown order, excuse me, with respect to certain uh, non life sustaining businesses, the court said, no, that also uh, went too far because the difference between a life sustaining business on the one hand and a non life sustaining business was in the words of the court, quote, shockingly arbitrary, close quote, and therefore uh, could not pass constitutional muster for those reasons, uh, those uh, two. Uh, prohibitions in particular, the uh, prohibition of gatherings of more than 25 indoors and outdoors of more than 250 uh, had to come down, as did uh, the uh, shutdown uh, order with respect to uh, non-life sustaining businesses. Now, Governor Wolf has loosened some of the restrictions uh, and allowing businesses to, to reopen uh, since this um ruling came down, what, what is going to happen with this ruling now moving forward? Well, first of all, it's going to be appealed. But to your point, Lauren, and this is an important point, the court said, well, yes, the uh, governor has, in fact, loosened some of these restrictions. But the problem is all he has done is has been to suspend them. He has not rescinded uh, those restrictions, those stay-at-home restrictions and the, uh, and the uh, shutdown uh, restrictions. Uh, so that he can he can reimpose those at any time. Uh, that is why the court's order was necessary. That said, Governor Wolf's administration has said that they do intend to appeal this ruling uh, to the Third Circuit Court of Appeals. And that's where uh, it ultimately will be decided if it isn't ultimately taken up by the United States Supreme Court. Now, uh a number of other states have imposed similar restrictions, both uh, Republicans and Democrats. What implication does this particular judge's ruling in this case have on other states? Well, of course, it's not precedential. It's a single federal district court judge in uh, Pittsburgh. So it doesn't have any real uh, bearing beyond the state of Pennsylvania. But when a federal uh, judge talks, uh, people listen, and it's going to be cited again and again, just as this judge uh, cited a ruling out of Kentucky uh, that addressed restrictions on faith-based faith gatherings, which, by the way, were explicitly exempted from the Pennsylvania governor's order. That notwithstanding, uh, this court, uh, uh, Judge Stickman said this uh, order, Judge Wolf's order, went too far. He said, look, I understand the urgency of the pandemic, but it's in an emergency that citizens have to be particularly vigilant in protecting their constitutional right, lest those emergencies and the restrictions imposed in those emergencies give way to an obliteration of the constitutional rights on which this country stands. Yeah, he specifically noted that these restrictions were undertaken with good intention, was his wording there. But even in an emergency, the authority of the government is not unfettered. So what does the Constitution allow? Have, has the, have the restrictions been overreaching? Well, but that's really the critical question. Really one of the critical issues, and this is not just an issue for uh, people who are focused on the law, as I am, is how much deference should the court give uh, to the governor in light of the fact that this is an emergency? And the court said, all right, well, look, if we're only talking about a couple of months, maybe we're going to give the broad uh, discretion that was first announced in a case called Jacobson, which I've cited in, in, uh, on this air that was cited back in 1905. But we moved a long way since then. And look, those restrictions were first put in place in March, said the court. We're now in September. The longer this goes on, the longer the restrictions are imposed and the more severe they are or potentially are, the less deference an independent judiciary is going to give to those and the more the government is going to have to do to show 
that they uh, that these restrictions are narrowly tailored to advance what is conceitedly an important government interest in preventing the spread of this awful virus. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens in the third district court of appeals. Dan Eaton, as always, appreciate you breaking it down for us. Good to be with you, Lauren. Absolutely. Have a great day, Dan. You too. Well, from hurricane ravaged Louisiana to